In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your first multi-tier C++ application using our DataSnap technology. There's lots of information online and in the doc wiki about building DataSnap applications. Here's a page that's in the doc wiki that gives, gives you an overview. It allows you to build multi-tier applications, a server side that might connect to a database, uh, client side that'll connect to the data snap server, call some methods, pass some data. And there's lots of tutorials about creating your servers and creating your clients, as well as connecting to a JavaScript client application and to mobile client applications. But in this first video, we're just going to keep things simple and build a data snap server in C++ Builder XZ3 and a simple data snap client that calls some methods of the data snap server. To that, we say file new, other, C++ builder projects, data snap server. And there's three different data snap server wizards available. There's the data snap rest application, which will build a data snap server that supports the rest protocol running on your Windows server. And you can have web pages and you can use client applications to make rest calls into your server. There's a data snap server wizard, which generates a server application using the data snap technology regardless of the protocol. In this point, you can choose TCP or HTTP. REST is always using HTTP protocol. And then you can also build on top of our web broker technology so that you can combine the web broker and data snap technologies together to have a web server side application that has data snap capabilities. Let's just start in this video with a very simple data snap server. And we can choose three different types of servers. We could also build one from scratch by dragging and dropping data snap components. But I want to show you the wizard and then show you what the base data snap server components are. So we can build a VCL form application for our server side to give it a little bit user interface. Usually data snap servers run in a server. There's no user interface. You have clients that might monitor them. Uh, but in this case, we'll, we'll just put a little form up. We could also have a console application, so it just runs. And it could be a service application that is installed on the server and is running it as a service. But let's just, for visual sake, uh, put a VCL form application in C++. You can then choose what protocols you want to support. And DataSnap supports TCP, HTTP, and HTTPS. Let's just keep this video simple and we'll use TCP IP protocol. There's authentication and authorization that's supported in the DataSnap technology where you can specify role-based uh, authorization for which clients can call methods, which clients can call administrative interfaces into your DataSnap server. There's checkboxes here for generating some sample methods that you can use, and we're going to do that so we can see what happens at the function call level across a multi-tier application. You can filter the data that's sent back and forth. The the data and metadata is sent in JSON packets. So you can filter those, encrypt them, compress them. There are also custom filters that you can build yourself to do other operations on the data packets being sent between a data snap client and a data snap server. If you're going to build some kind of web client, you can generate JavaScript files to give you the interfaces for dealing with method calls, passing JSON packets back and forth. And also if you're going to build some mobile clients, you can use our mobile connector technology to connect a mobile client to your data snap server. Again, we're going to just build a Windows client and a Windows server. We could build a Macintosh client and a Windows server. The data snap server technology runs on Windows currently. Let's just keep it simple again and do TCP. It lets us select a port. Let's see if there's a port available. The default is port 211 or you can click this button to find an open port. You can also change it in code and change it in the object inspector. And then we have three choices here for the server methods ancestor class. So if we're just going to do method calls, we will use T component. If we want to do database operations, we can use a data module. If we want a full server module with full life cycle support, then we would choose the data snap server module. Let's just keep it simple here and have a component class. Now we've got our VCL form, and so let's put in here C++ Builder Data Snap Server, and let's uh, save this out, and here's my main form. There's also a server container unit, which has the components, and there's the server method unit for those sample server methods that are generated. And this is going to be my CPP Data Snap Server app. So what do we have? We have a form, in this case a VCL form. 
we have a server methods unit which has those two sample methods echo string and reverse string that the wizard generated for us and we have a server container unit which contains the three components that make up a data snap server there's the data snap server itself and whether it has a property auto start it also has a couple events like on connect on disconnect you might want to count the number of clients that are connected to your data snap server and do some logging keep track of errors things of that kind here's the server class the server class includes the lifecycle property the life cycle can be invocation which means make a call from a client to a server do the operation and it's done with the connection there's session which means as a client is connected to your data snap server then keep the connection open until the client closes and then there's server side which says the server will keep track of all the session and state information that's available let's just leave it as session so as our client is there and then we have the transport and the transport in this case is TCP IP it's using port 211 there's some other operations keep alive uh, interval where some keep alive packets will be sent out by your data snap server to a connected client to see if it's there maybe it gets busy uh, doing some operations on the client side so it doesn't want to shut it down you can set up buffer sizes you can set up pools of threads because a thread for each client that connects to the data snap server will get started and you can set up a maximum number of threads if you want so those are the three files that get generated out of the wizard besides the project itself in here we could also add additional methods in our data snap server we'll just use these two standard ones we could go and look at the header code and just right in here in the public area define additional functions and their interfaces and their return values and any parameters and then compile those in and do the implementation and they'll be there uh, to be used by your clients we'll put a panel on the user interface so we have something there so we'll save it and we'll run it now first thing if you've got Windows firewall turned on you'll see this message come up because your data snap server is trying to access port 211 it tells you the name of the application that's trying to get control and you can choose to allow access and now my data snap server is running so let's go over into the project manager project group let's add a new project this is going to be a C++ builder FireMonkey desktop application it'll be an HD application and this is going to be my C++ builder XE3 data snap client application and we're going to put an edit box and we'll put a label and we'll put two buttons for the two methods that we want to test in our data snap server and the first one is going to execute the echo function that's over here in our server method and the second one is going to exercise the reverse in our server method over here to reverse a string now data snap is built on top of the database connection technology that we have so we need to put down a t-sql connection we can go over to our data explorer and under data snap we can add a new connection let's call this our data snap test connection here it asks us what protocols we want to use i'm just going to use tcp and that port 211 uh, the name i'm going to from my client to my server is going to be localhost it's all running right here i can test the connection and the connection succeeded because the data snap server is running down here on windows we're not doing any special logging in so we can again connect and disconnect to it and let's put a checkbox and we'll give it the label for data snap server connection and then on its on change event we'll just say sql connection one connected is equal to the checkbox is checked now if i was going to run this on a macintosh i'd have to have the host name or ip address where my data snap server was running we could always go over to our parameters and change localhost or have code that starts up and chooses the right host where my data snap server may be load from an ini file and if we just uh, save all of this let's go back to our demo area and create a cpp data snap client here's our main form and this is our uh, cpp data snap client app in order to get information about those interfaces from the data snap server i select the sql connection component right mouse click and you'll see a pop-up menu called generate data snap client classes so we'll generate this and what gets generated is source code which is the interface methods that is going to execute the commands to call the remote method and then we pass any parameters in this case a unicode string and we'll get the result back from calling the function for both echo string and reverse string and if we can't connect to the data snap server then it'll throw exceptions that we can handle so we need to save this generated source code file and we'll put it in the client and this is going to be our data snap client classes you can give it whatever name you want we need to include the header file so that we can call those methods so in here 
we'll just say include data snap client dot h. So once we've added the include file for those generated client class interfaces, we can now create event handlers for our two buttons to call those remote methods. So for echo, we'll put some code in. And what we're going to do is say T server methods one client. That's the name of the of the class that was generated for us. T server methods one client is that name. We can go and look at the header file and here it is T server methods cl one client and it's got some command operations. It's got our remote methods. And again, if we change and add methods on the server side, we'll need to regenerate the data snap client classes again and they'll show up over here. Then we'll instantiate a connection by calling new T server methods one client and we'll pass it SQL connections DBX connection command to make the connection. And then inside of a try block, we'll call via temp the remote method, which is actually calling into this server method interface echo string, passing the string, which is the parameter, running these commands, executing the command remotely, and then uh, getting the result back. And we put an underbar underbar finally of the try block to delete that instance variable temp of the connection to the server method. And we can do the same thing for the second button that's going to call reverse string. Let's just copy this source code and paste. In this case, we're going to call reverse string. And we'll save all this. Let's do a make to make sure everything is okay in the code. It is. Let's run the, the client. And we've got the server running underneath here. Here it is. So let's put in some text. Hello, world. And then notice that label one, which is our enter some code, is getting echoed back from the server and calling reverse string will set that label to the reverse of whatever's in the code. And then if we call uh, and are not connected and it says connection cannot be nil, make sure the connection's been open, right? So that's that built-in code for testing to make sure that everything is good when you try to call a remote method, you need to be connected. And we can do all of this in 64-bit windows for the server side and do a build. And so now we have a 64-bit version. Let's allow access. It's running. If we look in the task manager, we've got our CPP data snap server. It doesn't have the star 32, so it's running as a 64-bit process. We go back to the client, leave it at 32-bit and run it. And let's connect to the data snap server and call echo and call reverse. A 32-bit client, because it's running in its own process, talking to a 64-bit data snap server. So there's your first C++ builder data snap client and server.